OSG, OSG, change the game. Come together, bringing leaders, we don't play. Make a difference, being different, switching lanes. OSG, OSG, change the game. For me, it just continues to impress upon me as a school leader, to impress upon me as a community leader, how important it is that before we can even begin to get to academics, we must, must, must wrap ourselves around ensuring that, that we're building strong communities that have a foundation of social, emotional, and spiritual strength. If we're not ensuring that we're tending to the social, emotional, and spiritual needs um, of our babies before we even you know, sit them down and talk to math or talk to ELA, then we really aren't doing what we need to do. We're not really living up to, to the charge. You know, people entrust us with their most valuable assets, their babies, their children, and how we care for them, how we are intentional around creating an environment that is loving way before we get to the, 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 the math and the ELA. Listen, you can learn math in ELA when you're 30 and 40. You, if you didn't make it there because we didn't shower you with love and wrap you in love, then, then what are we doing? Uh, most of us were given the, 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 the horrible news of those, those young people that were massacred and in their schools. Um, and I just wanted to know from you and uh, a couple of other young people, what are you feeling about all of this? Oh, um, that's actually a very good question. Um, I personally feel like that if this did end up happening to us, I would feel unsafe with even like even walking out of my own house because to actually like to actually know that like young kids that could have even been us like have been like massacred inside of like such a horrifying event it does make like a student like me and maybe other students like scared because they're wondering is this going to happen to me? Because it's happening to a lot of people. Sometimes you don't even know, sometimes not on the news, but it can happen to a lot of different people, no matter their race, no matter their gender, no matter their ethnicity, no matter their sexuality. So it does make me scared for my safety and also for who I am as a person, which as a teen, it's best if you don't worry about that because you're mostly worried about is, are my grades good? Am, am I going to be able to get to high school? What am I going to wear for the day? I don't want to be worried about someone might come to my school and hurt my friends. That's something you don't want to worry about in your daily life. What can we do to be more available and attentive to some of these disorders, these mental health disorders that we've been, that we mentioned earlier today? Ooh, um, I definitely know that there should be days where we do bring awareness to these mental disorders, like for example, the eating disorder, anxiety, panic attacks, different stuff that have to deal with the mental state of a person. Because a lot of the times, not even people even like recognize that they're going through some of these like mental, like these mental like this challenges. Yeah, or, mental challenges. You know. So it's best if we let them know like, hey, um, maybe you might have anxiety attacks. You might not even know that you're having them. You might just think I'm overreacting, but it's best to let the students know, hey, remember this is a safe place. If you need to talk to someone, we can help you find a person or you can talk to us. So it will be really nice if students did have mental health days where they're aware of different mental um, different mental states that they could be in once in a while or maybe for the rest of their life because sometimes that those mental those mental challenges can last a lifetime sadly sometimes they don't even go away sometimes they go away for a while sometimes they come back but wow. it's best if students are aware of what they can go through but ladies and gentlemen i want to bring my brother the great the legendary steve rifkin to the building the owner Founder of Loud Records. You know, to me is that that's extremely important too. You know, you, you listen to a lot of these politicians and they're saying what everybody needs, but they're dictating what they think they need. They're not listening to what people what people really need. Right. And you know, my thing is that I'm a listener. I don't you know, ladies can tell you I don't like to talk much. Um 
I, I listen and then I go from there. So, you know, and then, you know, I heard a lot of things about mental illness, you know, that runs deep in my family. You know, when I left loud, I started having anxiety attacks. I started having panic attacks. I didn't know what the hell it was. Then I got addicted to pills. Um, so I could calm myself down, you know, and then finally I realized whatever it was, you know, whatever it triggered, yeah. um, you know, I got off the pills and, you know, I, I still was having some form of anxiety attack. I didn't believe in doctors. I didn't, you know, and I ended up getting sick um, eight years ago where I had a massive heart attack and I, I flatlined three times, you know, and again, you know, they put me on all forms of medication and then just recently, around three weeks to a month ago, I caught COVID. So the medicine that they had to put me on, I couldn't take any I couldn't take the antidepressants. I couldn't take my cholesterol medicine. I couldn't take my blood pressure medicine. And um, I've been off all these meds now for a month. I went to my doctor yesterday. Now I've, I believe in doctors now. Um, where my blood pressure is perfect, my cholesterol is perfect. And there's not a dark shadow from the antidepressants over me. And I haven't had it. I mean, I haven't had a panic or an anxiety attack in a long time, but now I'm more clearer than I've ever been. But my question for you is, um, what are your thoughts around the responsibility that artists and record companies have now in terms of the type of music that is being put out that's negatively influencing uh, the youth and the children right now? Let's just talk about the artists first, right? The, you know, the artists are going to be the artists. And they're going to say what they want to say and they're going to do what they want to do. Good, bad, or indifferent, right? The, the record company in today's place, I'm not a fan of. I think everybody should do their own thing and be fully independent. Um, and the, the, the problem is today is, you know, you can take, let's just say Young Thug. I'm just throwing the name out, you know, well, whatever it is. The record company wants to dictate to the artist on what the artist should do. And it's, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to let the artist be the artist. Who am I? I? I grew up in Long, like I said, I grew up in Merrick, Long Island. My dad discovered James Brown. I was good. So who am I to say to ladies, change your hook, change this, change that. I'll tell, I'll give them my feedback of what the street is saying. You know, and I could say, hey, speak to Dr. Small, speak to this person, speak to that person, see what they're saying so you can hear what they're saying where it's not coming from me. And and and, and that and that was my job. My my job was to make sure the artist doesn't rap. Um, like, what would you offer when it comes to how you allow or defend freedom of speech, particularly in the arts, in, in the music? I, I mean, the freedom of speech in the music, you got to let the artists be the artists, right? So if they're talking about having sex with a woman, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm not going to want my 10-year-old daughter to hear it, right? So I would almost do something, have the movie studios did it, you know, if it's G, PG, PG-13, you know, rate something that way, this way the artist could be the artist. And at the end of the day, my 10 year old, my, my daughter's not 10 anymore, but you know, my 10 year old daughter is gonna hear it. She's gonna find a way to hear it if it's through her friends, her brothers, her cousins, whatever it is. But you know, when I'm in the car and with her, you know, it's like, all right, I'm gonna put it on, you know, the, the, I'll put the clean version, you know, whatever the clean version station is, you know, that that's what I'm going to do. I, I for me, I just was. I'll get embarrassed. Um, but like I said, she's going to hear it either in school, through a brother, a cousin, a friend, on the bus. You know, however. But when she's with me, or he's with me, then you you, you can monitor something. And you know, and I was a hypocrite because I I let my I let my boys hear whatever the hell they wanted to. But I was protective over my daughter. 
Reimagining in schools doesn't have to be like, we're going to strip the whole school down. Sometimes we got to reimagine how we do things. I've been pushing my clients and the folks that I work with, shout out to all of you who are on here, is that I've been pushing a lot of strategic planning. If we, if you don't plan right now, you're planning to fail. And it's not just strategic planning where we're thinking about just looking at the budget, right? And saying all the things that we need to get. It's about what you want to do. Who do you see your kids being, right? Like, what do you want to do? Who, what is most important? I actually did a PD today and we talked about big rocks and the analogy of the big rocks are a lot of times we fill up our cups with all the little rocks because those are all the little things that we do. And because we fill up our, our cups with little rocks, we can't fill them up with the big things that are important. We do it in reverse. Instead of thinking about what's most important and building our lives around that. And it's the same way in our schools. It, 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 it flabbergasted me be, of how many people start their year without a plan. We had um, one of our OG sisters ask for a 90 day plan. And I sat and waited to see how many people could, would have access to it. If we're not thinking about 90 day plans, if we're not thinking about 30 day plans, if we're not thinking about four year strategic plans, then we're doing an injustice to ourselves in our schools and we're planning to fail. And now more than ever, when we talk about reimagining schools, you got to have a plan that's focused on some key big rocks that you have. And if your big rocks are only about implementing programming, you're going to find yourself in need of other things and you're never going to see yourself hit the plateau. So I urge folks to be thinking about, and safety is a big piece of it. And I was, I was referring to Dr. Johnson. She started planning early in March. And what she said to me is, Powell, I see what I want from my kids, but I'm not getting it. Help me understand. I said, have you ever asked your kids? And she said, huh? I said, have you ever asked your kids if what you're doing is effective? And she said, you know, we, we asked them here and there. I said, well, then let me spend a week talking to your kids and your staff. So those are the pieces of data that we should be collecting. You want to talk about impact? Because if what you're doing is not impacting your client and your client are your kids, then we're far off the map. When you start thinking about developing an education system of how we're preparing kids, it's not just going to be those rote tasks. Uh, right now, we're just so bogged down with, with memorization or regurgitating the facts. But we have these little black boxes in our hands, these phones that have every information in the world. And there's going to be even more and more information on those boxes. So nothing is going to be hidden anymore. So it's not about facts. It's about how do you take in the information? How do you critically read through it? So reading, first of all, emotionally, and then apply the information. Uh, and, and, and so that's going to be the value of, of what we need to be teaching our kids instead of just one plus one equals two. In urban areas, we're only using technology to point and click in gaming. And in, 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 in non-urban areas, we're using technology to be creative, to communicate, to collaborate, to, to uh, you know, uh, critical thinking, all those kind of things. And so it's a lot of paradigm shifts that we got to think about and we got to make bold choices that people are not going to like, but it's in the interest of our kids, like it's in the interest of our kids. And then we have to take bold steps and quit being comfortable with, with uh, teaching just the facts. And, 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 and like you said, having that uh, whole child, right, yeah. teaching that social emotional development uh, because of the because of the information that's going to come through, because of the access that people are going to have to you from around the world to bully, you know what I mean? to use technology in a negative way that will mess with your mind. If you don't have a child, if you're not teaching children to, to how to cipher that information, how to, how to deal with the healthy mind, then that's, I'm telling you, like it, it's a lot of things that's on the horizon that we need to, to really stop preparing kids for our past and start preparing kids for their future. You bring up a really great point when it comes to just us being able to know what's going on outside. And as I said, I'm, I'm, we, you're big on accountability, so am I, when it comes to talking about educators. And I think sometimes all it takes is just for us to listen. You know, we listened to a young lady just now, an eighth grader, who told us what we should look for. It's, it's, it's our responsibility now to take what she said and be able to go back into our schools, go back into our communities, and really listen again. Because I think that's what has been lost, is the art to listen. And what you and Lays have been able to do, especially with the work you do in the music industry, is that the, the art of listening is really what makes you guys so successful. 
And I think it's important that we remind educators that it's the same concept. It's not just simply being able to talk all the time. A lot of times it's about listening. And I don't know if we are in a place um, in terms of education or across the country that people listen enough these days. Everybody got something to say, always got something to say, not everybody's willing to listen. And so I, I definitely take what you said really you know, to heart and know that we just have to do a better job of that. We got to do a better job of listening. Everybody does. It's not only you. I mean, it's, it's literally everybody. And it's just, you know, it's in business. It's in, it's, it's just in everyday life. It's in your marriage. Yeah. If, if, if you don't know what your wife or your husband want, you, you, you're going to have a failed marriage. 